And Ms. Adam, uh, every one of you. And Adam Kennedy. Welcome to our panel, Ethnic Cleansing to Extinction. A very warm welcome to our esteemed panelists. Let us give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Kashmir, this is the land that has been the fountainhead of Hinduism since times immemorial. It was a flourishing society that was home to Adi Shankaracharya, Panini, who wrote, who wrote the Ashtadhyayi, the treatise on grammar, Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutra, Ayurveda, Abhinav Gopi, who wrote the Natya Shastra and was the inspiration behind Kashmir Shaivism. Sharda Beat, the spiritual and philosophical headquarters of Vedic school of thought. It was what Harvard and Oxford are today. But it attracted the best brains in India who wanted to stay there. Students would say, Namaste Sharda Devi Kashmir Purvasini and take three steps towards Sharda Beat in the hope that they would, they would go there for their advanced studies. And the list goes on and on. And I won't spend too much time going through the list. Unfortunately, over the last millennium, <coughs> Kashmir has, under a, has been under a dark eclipse. Its indigenous people, the Kashmiri Pandits, most of us are here, have been the target of ethnic cleansing and he be, have been systematically driven out of our homeland. Our Kashmiri Pandits are living in exile in many camps in Jammu. And we have a threat of becoming extinct if we do not do something right away to settle ourselves in our homeland. We don't have a fire of revenge but have the fire to keep our culture alive. We are very fortunate to have amidst us a distinguished panel. Each of the panelists are luminaries in their respective fields who will shed some very important light on this subject. They all have a huge following which can really become a multiplier a force multiplier for our civil society movement. It is certainly our hope that we can come up with a way forward from the panel discussion. Although our esteemed panelists do not need any introduction, I would like to say a little bit about them by way of introduction. I'll introduce them in alphabetical order so that's to be respectful to them. So first of all, Let's welcome Mr. Ajay Bharti. <laughs> Mr. Ajay Bharti was an RSS Pracharak for a few years, and then later on, he was an MLC in the JNK government, and now is a spokesperson of the BJP in Jammu and Kashmir. Next, we have Dr. Anand Rangarathan. Please give him a big round of applause. He's a molecular scientist, writer, author, and political analyst. He writes and appears frequently on television debates on politics, media, and science. His columns have appeared in Swarajya DNA, First Post, News Laundry. He's currently a professor at GNU, and uh, please welcome Dr. Ranganathan uh, once again. To the <laughs> Next, we have Mr. Ashok Ban, who is a senior advocate at the Supreme Court. 
a columnist, conflict resolution expert, and a member of several NGOs. Please welcome Mr. Ashok Bhan with a big round of applause. Last but not the least, we have Mr. Ashwini Upadhyay. <laughs> Mr. Ashwini is an advocate in the Supreme Court and BJP leader. He has the distinction of being called the PIL Man of India, having filed more than 150 PILs. His pursuit of PILs has been so relentless that in July 2022, the Supreme Court said they would need to set up a special court for Mr. Upadhyay's PILs. Um, just some information before we start our discussion. Um, we want to keep the discussions interactive. So uh, even though our question may be directed against, uh, well, uh, directed towards a panelist, uh, the others can feel free to chime in uh, if they would like to share their thoughts on that subject. So um, I would like to start uh, with you, Mr. Ajay Bharti. Um, since you were right there in Kashmir when the genocide happened, all of us are well aware of the dire circumstances of 19 January uh, 1990, when Kashmiri Pandits had to leave everything behind and run for their lives. I actually got it from both sides. My, my wife's family had to run in the middle of the night, leaving everything behind, uh, just taking you know, a little bit of money and gold that they had. And they ran away, and uh, the very next week they found out that the house was burned down to the ground. From my side of the family, we were told that there are terrorists living in your home. And you can well imagine, we didn't try to get them evicted. So uh, I got it from both sides, and I'm sure all of you have similar or worse stories. But uh, what we want to do is uh, to speak with Mr. Ajay Bharti so that you can tell us how the Kashmiri Pandits were feeling uh, at that time when the genocide happened. Um, some Kashmiri Pandits say that you know, they were aware of what was happening. Some say we didn't know what was happening. We kind of had an inkling, but uh, we weren't sure. So uh, if you could share your thoughts, uh, Mr. Bharti, on uh, what was happening, that would be great to set you know, the tone uh, for the panel discussion. And please feel free to either come on this podium, or if you'd like to speak from there, uh, that's fine too. Thank you, Monji, and uh, thank you, and congratulations to both GKPD and uh, JKVM for organizing such a nice and impressive event. And also inviting me to share my views with such an eminent panel particularly those whom we watch every day on TV and in fact wait to watch them in the evenings. I don't think any Kashmiri Pandit had any confusion about what was happening in Kashmir. As Sadhguru in the morning or even later uh, as the day progressed, including Ajay Ji, uh, spoke, uh, hinted at certain things from the very, very beginning, particularly after 1931. We are aware that uh, planned, a properly planned, a systematically executed and efficiently uh, packaged this uh, process of ethnic colonialism was happening in Kashmir. And the master of this was Sheikh Mahmoud Abdullah without any hesitation and his organization. There, uh, it is not just our feeling, it is the evidence and that from his own writings. Uh, we can quote uh, pages together, everybody amongst us knows, even the world knows, but sometimes it gets, uh, under the, gets pushed under the carpet. Now all of us must have read Atish Chinar, particularly the Urdu version. Sheikh Abdullah is so clear about his, even though we know that his autobiography was written by Mahmoud Yusuf Tain. That is another uh, sort of joke. But, he writes from the very beginning what was his in mind. 
This includes when he meets Begum Abdullah, what he tells to Begum and Begum in return tells to her before, at the time of marriage. He writes on page number 195 in this article, कि बेगम ने कहा कि आप इस्लाम की खिदमत में निकले हैं मैं भी इस राह पर आपके साथ कुर्बानियां देने को तैयार हूं माइंड द वर्ड्स दिस इज रिटन इन आतश चिन्ना एंड आल्सो पेज नंबर 200 पढ़िए उस पर लिखते हैं कि मैंने अपने बच्चों का नाम किस लिए रखा फारूक मुस्तफा तारिक कहां से इंस्पायर होकर नाम आए याद करें नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस के हेड क्वार्टर का नाम Mujahid Manzil. So it was not the intent only, it was declared openly in every sense of the word and in acts also that was mentioned here the Big Landed Abolition Act in 1950s and also subsequent uh, processes. Hum sabne suna hai, kashri suna how to eliminate this, how to marginalize, how to exclude this from the mainstream, this municipal minority. And this was packaged as a modern day reform and we were presented as villains. In every respect we were presented as villains. The community was presented as villain. And stories were good and anything which we had done good that was ignored, that was not spoken about, things which we had not done. They were presented to the rest of the world as if uh, we were the atrocity, we, we had committed the atrocities on the other side of the, uh, this uh, population, other section of the population. 1951 ke baad jab wo Prime Minister bani, uske baad hamari population mein jo decrease hua, wo to tha hi tha. Lekin saath ke saath, humko as punishment, जो अगर कोई अपॉइंटमेंट थोड़ी बहुत होती भी थी तो वो किन रीजंस में होती थी या तो लद्दाख में या जम्मू में और वहां पर हमको प्रेजेंट फिर इस ढंग से नेगेटिवली किया जाता था कि इस कम्युनिटी को इसके साथ अगर ज्यादती कुछ हो रही है तो वो इनके स्वभाव के कारण हो रही है इसके साथ एक चीज और कुछ झूठ इस तरह से कुछ मिथ्स दे वर क्रिएटेड डेलिबरेटली एंड फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग इटसेल्फ हमको बताया गया गांधी जी को जम्मू कश्मीर में रे ऑफ होप दिखाई दी एज इफ सारा सब जब सो कॉल्ड सब कॉन्टिनेंट जब जल रहा था कश्मीर में कुछ नहीं एक मैं अभी अपने स्कूल पेनलिस्ट को भी दे रहा था हमारे सामने ही पद्मश्री काशीनाथ पंडिता जी बैठे हैं 2012 की ये किताब है 1947 में इसमें ये 168 डेथ्स कश्मीरी हिंदूज की जो हुई है ये इस पर रिकॉर्डेड है इट वाज रिवाइज्ड सून आफ्टर लगभग 200 क्रॉस हो चुके हैं 200 डेथ्स इन 1947 इट्स और हमें बताया गया है कि कश्मीर तो एकदम वहां तो शांति थी अगर कहीं गांधी जी को वो दिखाई दी किरण रोशनी की किरण वो तो सिर्फ कश्मीर में ही दिखाई उसके बाद दूसरी जो बहुत ही ज्यादा दूसरा झूठ फैलाया जा रहा है आज भी जोर शोर से कहा जा रहा है कि जो किलिंग्स या ये जो एक्सोडस की कहानी शुरू हुई ये जनवरी में हुई आफ्टर बीजेपी सपोर्टेड वीपी सिंह कैंप पर ये बताया जा रहा है और बदकिस्मती सुनिए मतलब ये हैरानी करने वाली बात बाकियों के लिए हो सकती है हमारे लिए नहीं है जो जो उस वक्त होम मिनिस्टर था मुफ्ती मोहम्मद सईद उसकी बेटी भी यही दो रहा थी यानी वो होम मिनिस्टर जिसके सपोर्ट से था उसको दोष है लेकिन होम मिनिस्टर को नहीं है बट वी ऑल ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस नो द डेथ किलिंग इज द टारगेटेड किलिंग सेट स्टार्टेड इन द 60स इटसेल्फ विद किलिंग ब्रूटल एसोसिएशन ऑफ पंडित अमरचंद जी ऑफ नईदहल बिकॉज़ ही हैड एक्सपोज्ड दिस अलफा he was the person who exposed uh, Magbul Bar. He was uh, uh, brutally killed in his village. Then in June 1980, Shri Pandit Hakim of Kachwa Mukam, Tangabur, he was killed in 80. There was one August Rishi doing tapasya in Rafiabad, jungles of Rafiabad in 84. Kesha, Pandit Keshavna of uh, Gazarana in 88, 87. Similarly, up to 31st of November, because BP Singh takes charge on December uh, 2nd. So what happened till then? Almost nine deaths 
in that year only. Pandits, I am talking about Kashmiri Hindu killings. And uh, worst stop it. Jo, matlab, kaise justify kiya ja sakta hai, malum nahi. Aap mein se kisi ko pata nahi yaad hai ki yahaan par rahe honge. 1996 mein, jab Faruk Abdullah dubara chief minister bane, to yahaan par parallel bhavan mein, mein unka swagat kiya gaya tha Kashmiri Samiti ki taraf se. اس میں ہم نے میں نے ہی ایک پرشن بھی پوچھا تھا آج میرے پاس اس ریزلوشن کی کاپی ہے پہلا کام جو ریکونسٹیوٹیٹ اسمبلی آف جمہور کشمیر نے کیا وہ کنڈولنس ریزلوشن تھا ہی منشنڈ سو منی نیمز نوٹ ای سنگل نیم آف انی کشمیری ہند نوٹ ای سنگل نیم آئی ایم تیلنگ آئی ایم ریپیٹنگ اور جب میں نے ان سے پوچھا تو ہنڈو صاحب بیٹھے تھے اے اس نے یہ بگو مجھ یہ That is the type of things और आज भी वो कहता है कि कश्मीरी हिंदुओं की हत्या तब तक बंद नहीं होगी जब तक आप पाकिस्तान के साथ बात नहीं ये एक ऑस्पेक्ट है मैं ये कह रहा हूं कि हम सब जानते हैं कि ये हो रहा है किया जा रहा था लगातार किया रहा किया जा रहा था और जो लोग करने वाले थे उनको भी हम सब जानते हैं और वो आज भी वही कर रहे हैं आज भी वो उससे बाज नहीं आए हैं बस ٹیون اور اس میں پھرک پڑا ہے اتنا ہی اندر آیا ہوا ہے آپ لوگوں کو یاد ہوگا نائنٹین ایٹی تھری میں شہر کشمیر کرکٹ سٹیڈیم میں میچ ہوا آپ میں سے بہت سے لوگ رہے ہوں گے اس اور اس کے بیچ میں جب وہ کچھ وہ بھی نامی گرامی لوگ تھے جو پچھ کھولنے آئے تھے پولیس کچھ کر نہیں رہی تھی کیونکہ چیف منسٹر فارق عبداللہ صاحب سٹینڈ میں بیٹھے تھے تو ایم این سبروال صاحب ایس پی ہوا کرتے تھے انہوں نے کھل گنڈا اٹھایا ان کے پیچھے دوڑے اٹھائی شروع کر دی ویدن تھری ڈیز فاروق عبداللہ صاحب کے ہموسیم پر ایکشن اینڈ ٹرانسفر ایس 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 بی تو یہ کنٹنیوسلی ہوتا رہا ہے اس لیے جو نائنٹی نائنٹی میں ہوا it was not one event it was collaboration of a process which was set in motion right in 1931. I am not talking about 600 years of persecution. I am talking about modern day, uh, this ethnicalizing process, which is happening even now, because we are not, it is not just that our employees are on protest or something. Our very name is being trying to be uh, raised from the memory of, <coughs> memory of Kashmir. Panjal Deva becomes Pier Panjal. So many things we all know about it. I don't want to go to that. Mohan Ji has said one thing. Yes, yes. 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 اور یہ آج سے کلیر نہیں ہے انیس سو نبے میں جب ہم نکلے جلائی انیس سو نبے میں ایک کانفرنس اسی پرکار سے جمہو کے مہاجن حال میں ہوئی تھی وہاں پر ایک بہت ہی فیمس جس کو آج تک ہم ہمارا گائیڈنگ فورس ایسا گائیڈ لائنز والا ریزولوشن مانتے ہیں ریزولوشن نمبر فور اس ریزولوشن نمبر فور میں ہم نے تب ریزولو کیا تھا The scattered Hindu population of Kashmir must be reorganized in a manner. Tab word kiya tha, we'll create a security zone. Aaj hum keh rahe, we'll create a one place settlement. Yeh sirf ek rasta hai, ki humne wahan ja kar, ab ek gar, pachas garun se, hazar garun se gira hua, aur phir panch kilometer, chhe kilometer tak, aur koi Hindu ka naam nisha nahi, is prakar se hum nahi reh se. لیکن میرا ماننا ہے کہ جس پرکار سے ہمارا وہاں سے نکلنا یا نکالنا ایک ون آف ایونٹ نہیں تھا اسی پرکار سے ہماری واپسی بھی کوئی ایک ایسا ایڈونسٹیٹیو ڈیسیجن سے نہیں ہو سکتا ہے اس کے لئے کچھ سٹیپس چاہیے اسی طرح سے سب سے پہلے ہم سب کے لئے ہے کہ ہمارا فوکس آف ایکٹیوٹی ویل ہیو تو شیفٹ تو کیشنی ویل اس میں یہ نہیں کہ ہم فیزیکلی ابھی جائیں وہ دوسرا سٹیپ ہے تیسرا سٹیپ ہو سکتا ہے اس سے پہلے کچھ سٹیپ بہت ہی آوشک ہے جیسے ہمارے اپنے آپ کو ری انٹیگریٹ کرنا ویڈ کیشمی 
डोमिसाइल सर्टिफिकेट वोटर स्लिप वहां के वोटर लिस्ट में इस प्रकार से री इंटीग्रेट करना और फिर सरकार को हमारी मदद करनी होगी कि हम समय आज हम इलेक्टोरल रोल्स पर एक लाख के लगभग वोट कर रहे हैं इन स्केटर्ड वोटर्स को हमारी डिमांड हमने कही है अपनी तरफ से विशाखित जिले की तरफ से कि इनको तीन कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसीज में इकट्ठा कर दीजिए हमको इकट्ठा करने से पहले हमारे वोटर्स को इकट्ठा करिए सो देट वी कैन क्रिएट एन इन्फ्लुएंस इसी प्रकार से बताया जाता है कि मंदिर वहां पर सेफ है बहुत सेफ है उस ये जो हमारे सदगुरु भी इसमें करें कि वी विल हैव टू क्रिएट सर्टन सिंबल्स हमारे पास सिंबल्स हैं वेरी पावरफुल सिंबल्स देयर दे एग्जिस्ट इन कश्मीर इवन दो आई मस्ट टेल यू कि 2019 के बाद बहुत काम हो रहा है अभी यहाँ पर हमारे यहाँ रघुनाथ मंदिर वगैरह की इमेज हैं बहुत सरकार की तरफ से पैसा खर्च हो रहा है करोड़ों रुपए की वो उस पर रिपेयर और रेनोवेशन पर खर्चा हो रहा है लेकिन जो सिस्टमेटिक ढंग से इन सारे सिंबल्स को और उसमें भी जो एनक्रोजिट लैंड है एनक्रोचमेंट के बारे में किस प्रकार से वहाँ की सोसाइटी या एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन का पर्टिकुलरली जो लोअर हिस्सा है वो किस प्रकार से परेशान करता है आप सबको मालूम है कि 2019 के बाद जो हमारा माइग्रेंट प्रॉपर्टी प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट था उसको टीथ दिए गए और डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट को पावर दिया गया कि इफ ही इज सेटिस्फाइड ही कैन यूज फोर्स टू एक्सपेल द एनक्रोचर लेकिन सोसाइटी ने वहां पर क्या किया डीसी की जब उनके पास लेटर आती है डीसी को वो रिप्लाई लिखते हैं कि एक्शन टेकन एंड फाइल क्लोज उसमें हमारी इंटरवेंशन हुई तो ये कहा गया कि नहीं जब तक रिलीफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नहीं कहेगी तब तक आप ये नहीं करें आज की डेट में लोकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन नंबरदार के हवाले करती है हो नहीं सकता इस तरह से मेरे हिसाब से जिस जितना टाइम को ध्यान में रखकर मैं फिर अभी बात को छोटे हैं उसमें करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ एक ये जो कलेक्टर्स है जो इस एथनिक क्लिनिजिंग में जो ऑर्गेनाइज और जो पर्सन इन्वॉल्व है और उस माइंडसेट को समझने की जरूरत है छोटी सी दो एग्जांपल उस माइंडसेट की भी आपके ध्यान में लाना हो तो पद्मश्री मोतीलाल साकी जी की शहीज वत में दोनों मेंशन है एक कैसे मोहम्मद अब्दुल्ला तिब्बत बकाल साहब को इमामत से सिर्फ इसलिए निकाला गया बंड की किसी मस्जिद में वो इमामत किया करते थे क्योंकि उसने शिव भजन गाए रही इसलिए वो शीश बत में मोतीलाल साकी जी ने मेंशन किया है और वो एक कश्मीर में कशूर डिपार्टमेंट के सेमिनार की जिक्र भी करते हैं कि किस प्रकार से सेमिनार हो रहा था तो वहां पर जो बोलने वाले थे शुरू हुए हजरत मोहम्मद से शुरू करके उसी पर खत्म हो रहा था तो ये बोल नेचुरली कुछ बोल नहीं पा रहे थे जो हिंदू पार्टिसिपेंट्स थे टीचर्स थे मोतीलाल साकी जैसे लोग थे वहां पर तो शायद फारूक नाजकी साहब बीच में उठे कि हमारे पंडित भाई कुछ बोल नहीं रहे तो साकी साहब खड़े होकर कहते हैं हमें क्या मालूम था हम तो आए थे कि ये कश्मीरी डिपार्टमेंट का प्रोग्राम है मुझे हमें क्या मालूम था यहाँ पर इस्लामियत का सेमिनार है तो इस प्रकार की जो सोच है इसको ध्यान में रखते हुए और जो वापसी के कदम है उसमें जो स्टेप वाइज हमको चलने की बात है और ये क्लियर करना है कि हम स्केटर्ड वो उसमें नहीं रह सकते हैं और उसके लिए जो आवश्यक होगा सरकार की तरफ से मदद भी होनी ही चाहिए लेकिन कम्युनिटी को भी अपनी तरफ से इनिशिएटिव लेना होगा इस छोटी सी बात के साथ मैं आपकी बात को समाप्त करता हूँ नमस्ते थैंक यू अनिल जी फॉर पेंटिंग अ वेरी डिटेल पिक्चर ऑफ वट द सिचुएशन वॉज इन कश्मीर um i'd like to i'd like to next uh, come to uh, uh, dr anand raganathan um dr raganathan kashmiri pandits are scattered over five refugee camps um the rest are scattered all over india and a large number of them overseas uh, one full generation was born outside their homeland living in exile Now, as they say, it just takes a couple of uh, generations, and you can uh, wipe out that culture if it's not, you know, rooted uh, in their homeland. Well, we are very close to it, and uh, we've been wanting to go to our homeland, uh, but it has not been possible, even though uh, we've been outside for uh, 33 years and counting. Um, you expressed your anguish by saying, and I quote. what kind of country is this where jammu and kashmir can settle 40000 rohingya muslims 
but not 7 lakh Kashmiri Hindus. You also said, and I quote again, uh, three years to 2019, 3,686 law and order incidents in Kashmir. Three years after 2019, the number is only 430. Terror attacks have been reduced by 40% since 2019. Then why only 5,000 Kashmiri pundits have been brought home, of which 25 have been killed since? On another front, Pakistan has been reduced to a mere footnote in our Indian script. So indulge me, please. I want to know when the government could pull off this miracle of Article 370. Why does it seem to be dragging its feet in uh, rehabilitating the Kashmiri pundits? We are getting the impression that uh, the government lacks the will to bring them back. Uh, so we'd like to hear from you, Dr. Nangana. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, when I came here, I was told that uh, lashkar e taiba has given a threat to the organizers of this Kashmiri uh, Hindu Global Conference. Uh, judge Falcone, the famous Italian judge, once said, he who doesn't fear death die only once. The lashkar e taiba and its cohorts only have to look at the audience and the faces here, young and old, women and children and men, to see that all of you will die only once. Yeah. Many others before me have spoken the truth, the, the tragic way in which Kashmiri Pandits and Hindus are thought of, are labeled as cowards. It is the tragedy of this country that such labels are put on Kashmiri Hindus. Was it cowardice that made Vijaya eat the rice laced with her husband's blood? Was it cowardice that allowed Girija to be sawed alive after being gang raped? Was it cowardice that led Sri Utpal Kaul to wrap his one month old son in a jute sack and escaped from certain death. Every year, my good friend Aditya, his son, shows me the bus ticket that Utpalji bought on 19th Jan 1990. And I've always wondered when I look at that ticket, every year he takes it out from under the mattress, shows it to his son. What did it mean? for a father to have kept a bus ticket for 33 years? Was it to remind himself of that horrific journey, of his clasping tight his wife and his young children while he sat lost thinking of what he had left behind? Was it to remind himself of how he was counting every passing minute, counting every passing milestone to safety? Was it to remind himself of that blurred instant in the bus that contained within it the image of his struggles ahead? Or was it to remind himself that he needed to be strong, that this was a cruel, unforgiving country, that his struggles were his alone, and that he shall have to fight them all by himself? Was it kept under his mattress all this while? Did that bus ticket take the weight of his unbound sorrow every night of every day of every month since January 19, 1990? No. He kept it to remind himself that from now on, in his mind, that bus ticket was his adversary and that he shall look at him straight in the eye and tell him that he was down but not out, that he was undefeated, that he shall pick himself up and find work 
and educate his children and bring food to the table and greet every new day as he did the last with a smile on his face that he shall not be forgotten and today when the father slipped his hand under the mattress and found that bus ticket and gave it to his son he could almost have said son i pass this on to you now it is yours now you take care of it for it must be preserved for our future generations they must never forget that a man's body may be forced to flee but never his spirit they must never forget who we are and where we came from we are kashmiri hindu son and we stand today on our feet and one day we shall take the journey back home we are not cowards <coughs> in one sense ladies and gentlemen kashmiri hindus are children of mahatma gandhi not only because he is the father of the nation but also because his vision is on the cusp of being realized while preaching to those affected by the pre partition hindu muslim violence he had urged and i quote hindus should not harbor anger in their hearts against muslims even if the latter wanted to destroy them even if the muslims want to kill us all we should face death bravely and if they establish their rule after killing all hindus we would be ushering in a new world by sacrificing our lives unquote every time every single time a kashmiri hindu passes on a currency note the same mahatma sniggers at him as though perplexed why he hasn't yet sacrificed his life to usher in a new world well the mahatma did not snigger his vision stands realized the new world has truly been ushered in terrorists are targeting hindus settled in kashmir but not the hindus visiting kashmir True. tourist footfall in kashmir this past year has been the highest ever a staggering 16 million business is booming registers are ringing tourists are safe they want the hindus to flee but then return later as tourists they want the hindus to come as tourists and fill their coffers but not settle in their own land as kashmiri hindu sushil pandit himself a victim of ethnic cleansing says quote tourism in kashmir funds jihad the hindus are funding their own demise unquote how on earth can we watch this unfold and not do anything about it What kind of a country is this where one can settle 40,000 Rohingya Muslims in Jammu and Kashmir but not 7 lakh Kashmiri Hindus? There is no other way of saying it. We live in a nation of broken mirrors where you possess neither a shadow nor a reflection if you are a Kashmiri Hindu. We live in a nation that waits for death to rid us of our remembrances. Please wait a little more. Just a little. 33 years have gone but we haven't progressed from ugly inhospitable transit camps that dot the kashmir landscape at shekhpura natnusa virwan vesu matan hall in anantnag's vesu transit camp kashmiri hindus who want to flee because they fear for their lives are being kept locked up they can't even step out to buy essentials like milk and medicines is this the kind of freedom promised to the land's original inhabitants while the rohingyas enjoy unfettered movement in the near vicinity according to home ministry data only 17% of the promised houses for kashmiri hindus have been completed in the last 6 years only 5928 kashmiri hindus have been appointed through the prime minister's job scheme the number of kashmiri hindu refugees is 700000 a figure derived from the data provided by the government of jammu and kashmir that says 83200 families fled kashmir in the aftermath of the kashmiri hindu genocide 5928 5928 i shall leave it to the mathematicians amongst you to subtract this number from 700000 to an extent 
the Kashmir files, the recent film by Vivek Agnihotri has tried to reset the Kashmiri Hindu narrative. And that is why so many are rattled by it. Many prominent Kashmiri voices, the politicians, the intellectuals, writers, poets, all those who stayed silent even as the Kashmiri Hindu genocide unfolded right before their eyes. They called for a ban on the film. To them I ask, can there be reconciliation without remembrance? Crime without comeuppance? Can there be death without deliverance? Can there be justice without Nuremberg? Why would they want to hide the truth about the Nadimart massacre that the film truthfully depicts where terrorist Zia Mustafa lined up 23 unsuspecting Kashmiri Hindus and shot them point blank and, and as he was escaping he heard a baby cry and his comrade goaded Ye karnua chupe. And then the baby became the 24th victim. Why do they want to hide this? Why do they want to hide the truth about Girija Tuku who was raped and cleaved in two by a mechanical saw while she was still alive? Why do they want to hide the truth about BK Ganju who hid inside a rice barrel when jihadis came looking for him after his Muslim neighbor informed on him? Ganju was shot dead. Rice laced with his blood was fed to his wife Vijaya. Why do they want to hide the truth about slogans raised from mosques on 19th January 1990? Ralif, Salif, Galif, convert, run or die. Death to kafirs, pundits go but leave your women behind. Nizame Mustafa. Why do they want to hide all this? And what's this other side of the genocide that they demand should also be shown? That Yasin Malik, assassin of squadron leader Khanna, loved Damalu? That Bitta Karate, killer of 42 Kashmiri Hindus, was the son of a shawl weaver? That Zia Mustafa, perpetrator of the Nadimad massacre, was a compounder at a hospital? I'll tell you why they want this truth to be hidden. Because they realize that the Kashmir Files is not just a film. It is a Proustian collection of memories of Girija, of Ganju, of Dina Nath, of tens of thousands of Kashmiri Hindus who were betrayed by their own friends. They might have taken away the Kashmiri Hindus, their home, but they can never take away from them their words. For their entrapment in a film may fool us into believing they have a physical form, a form that can be destroyed when the film is destroyed. But the words existed much before their prisons did. Words never die. They always survive. In times of terror, we wrap them and we hide them like our ancestors did. And it may take 30 years or 300 or 3000 for them to be uttered again. But uttered again, they will be. And when they are, their words will echo in the valleys of violence where people only know how to light molotovs. And these words will make them like Diyas again. To be sure, I do not care about Islamists and the politicians forgetting about those words. What bothers me is that our government, our judiciary, our society has forgotten them. How can these pillars of our democracy forget those cries of Girija, those laments of Deena Nath? How? Hearing them, those words, those haunting voices, one feels lost for hope. Wondering whether the fabled arc of moral universe would ever bend towards justice for the Kashmiri Hindus. Remember that three years ago, the Supreme Court diabolically rejected reopening cases of criminal atrocities against Kashmiri Hindus because, quote, too much time had elapsed. That's correct. Justice is now weighed against time. A month ago, the same Supreme Court reiterated its previous stand, that of not opening cases of atrocities against Kashmiri Hindus. Governments come and go and we shout and we make a hundred excuses, but we can never get away from the fact that Kashmiri Hindus are in exile. As Salman Rushdie expressed so poignantly in the satanic verses, quote, an exile is a dream of glorious return. It is an endless paradox. Looking forward, but always looking back. An exile is a ball hurled high into the air. He hangs there, frozen in time, translated into a photograph, denied motion, suspended impossibly above his native earth. He awaits the inevitable moment at which the photograph must begin to move and the earth 
reclaim its own, unquote. When will that photograph begin to move? Mind turns numb at the very thought that a nation is going about its business for 30 years while half a million Hindus have been reduced to refugees in their own land. Is this what a so-called Hindu Rashtra is supposed to do for Hindus? We are the only country in the world that allows this across parties, across governments, right or left or center. Three years to 2019, three six eight six law and order incidents occurred in Kashmir. Three years since 2019, the number is only 430. Terror attacks have reduced by 40% since 2018. But then why is it that only 5,000 Kashmiri Hindus have been brought home? And of those few who have been, more than 25 have already lost their lives. Making Kashmir files tax-free was great, but remember your dharma. It is to make sure 7 lakh Kashmiri Hindus are brought home. <laughs> Time is running out. A refugee accepts his fate and the humiliation that comes along with it. For he must worry about his new life. He forgets how to complain. And that is a fatal mistake. Arunduti Roy, that totem of the left, once cushioned the crimes of Maoists by calling them, quote, Gandhis with guns. Well, Kashmiri Hindus are the Gandhis without guns. And that is a singular reason why no one cares for their plight in this country. Because this nation hears complaints through the barrel of a gun, not the ink of a pen. This nation believes inaction is a medicine. It believes time heals. It believes wounds do not fester. It believes the exiled never returns. This nation, as I said, waits for death, for death to rid its people of their remembrances. This nation wishes the Kashmiri Hindus all happiness and joy in the afterlife. Kashmiri Hindus are the Jews, but unfortunately, India is not Israel. They call Kashmir the Switzerland of the East. Wrong! It is the Srebrenica of the East. And it will remain so till such time every Kashmiri Hindu is returned home. Every single one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ranganathan, for that uh, very scintillating uh, speech. Um, it's touched the hearts of uh, several of us, and uh, how apropos um, you, you describe the situation that we're in uh, uh, with, with lots, of, um, lots of passion. Um, picking up on where you left off, you know, uh, regarding the uh, curated petition, uh, petition uh, filed by the Roots in Kashmir, um, into the mass murders and genocide of the members of the community during 1989-90 and subsequent years by Pakistan-based terrorists and the reasons for non-prosecution of FIRs of the crimes. The, uh, like you said, the Supreme Court uh, dis dismissed the petition saying 27 years had passed by and uh, the evidence is unlikely to be available. Um, I know uh, we have two eminent lawyers, uh, advocates, and the Supreme Court right here. Um, so I would like to pose this question uh, to uh, both of you, either of you, uh, whoever one would like to you know, speak about this first, uh, Mr. Ashwini Upadhyay and Mr. Ashok Ban. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We would like to hear uh, from you uh, what your thoughts are on the way the case was presented and uh, is there anything that can be done differently so that we, we can get a different outcome. Uh, so over to you, uh, Mr. Shobha. Namaskar to everybody. I want to preface the answer 
with a short intervention. We are here gathered in large numbers from across the globe. And we are not only a hall full of sign auditorium. We are seven lakh Kashmiri pundits who are spread all over the globe. But today I wish to say that having been forced to exile from Kashmir, we all take it, Anandi, as a very severe insult to the collective conscience of our community. Mind you, I will repeat, it's a serious insult to the collective conscience of our community. How do we avenge that? I saw just now Dr. Surinder Kohl uh, relegated in a corner seat there. Now he has gone out for a while. And I was developing a thought that is this not a form of avenging our insult? Gathering here in this hall, expressing ourselves with a lot of intellectual fervor, but underlying that fervor is a deep protest. Protest against bigotry, protest against communalism, protest against hate, and above all, the protest against the killings and exile of Kashmiri Pandits. It's a very somber occasion for me for the reason you'll excuse me if I in between say something on Kish, in Kashmiri because I can't, I, I'll translate it later. You said Lashkar gave us a threat for not holding this conclave. And they use lots of languages and slang that we are identified with A group, B group, C group. But Lashkar does not realize that they are the settlers in Kashmir. They are not the aborigines. The aborigines is this community Yatva <laughs> Na constitution ka daman choda, na Bharat ka daman choda, na Bharatiya tva ka daman choda. Ham dathe rahe as patriots, aur ham aaj bhi struggle karte hain for an idea of India in Kashmiri. And that idea of India in Kashmir is a mirage for union government and 130 crores of Indians until Kashmiri Pandits go back with dignity. It's a failure. <coughs> if 
बहुत ज्यादा हमारी परंपरा है और हम जिस पंचायत को फॉलो करते हैं अपने डे टू डे ट्रेडिशंस में डे टू डे रिचुअल्स में डे टू डे विधि में वो पांच हजार साल से हम करते आए चाहे हम किस हाल में हैं मगर ये जो एक्सडस हुआ हमारा नाइन्टी में वी कंसिडर इट बिसाइड्स द इंसल्ट टू आवर कलेक्ट कॉन्शियंस एज अ वॉर इन्फ्लिक्टेड ऑन अस एंड वी आर द वॉर विक्टिम्स माइंड यू उपाध्याय जी आई एम गिविंग यू अ थॉट प्रॉस वी आर वॉर विक्टिम्स सुप्रीम कोर्ट और नो सुप्रीम कोर्ट द वर्ल्ड हैज टू टेक द कॉग्निजेंस ऑफ अवर विक्टिम हो एज अ वॉर विक्टिम द वॉर वॉज इन्फ्लिक्टेड ऑन अस एंड आवर एक्सडस आवर किलिंग इज द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ दैट वॉर and that around that time the indian nation state failed us and it is failing us today also 33 years after we have a question kashmiris say that most of the muslims also left along with kashmir pandits that's a fact some of the muslims were also killed they were also forced to flee but how come after 96 when the governor rule was lifted the same muslim so called migrants returned back some of them came to power in kashmir they ruled us It's a big question. I wish to pose, and all of us are posing. How is it that they went back, settled themselves within the Muslim milieu of Kashmir, and Kashmiri pundits, as a community, is still haunted out in exile? from 96 onwards when the so called democratic process started in kashmir abdullah came to power umar abdullah was doing a job in ogroi as assistant manager here when he was a migrant mahbuba mufti was seen in khan market enjoying her coffee and her father was also as an exile living in delhi with the dolls of government of india most of the muslims who went back got absorbed in the muslim milieu were accepted by the same so called lashkars and settlers and why is it that kashmiri pandit is not acceptable number 1 number 2 question i pose to myself as in law we say when we argue a matter and we have to pose a question to the judge we can't ask him my lord we are posing a question so we say in our legal parlance i ask the question to myself so i ask a question to myself and to you all because you are not my lords you are <laughs> kashmiri pandit brethren and sisters how long a mighty indian nation state and in particular after 2014 that has evolved into a big power in the world the largest democracy its economy is flourishing how come that the managers of this nation state do not take a call 
do not exert their will. If on pending agenda issues like creating a Ram Mandir on the disputed site, when the will can be exerted there, why is the will lacking in repatriating Kashmiri Pandits back with dignity, honor, and political empowerment? What is the matter? We don't buy Home Minister's answers. Those are wooden-headed answers. We don't buy some Lieutenant Governor's, uh, what should we call it? Wooly, wooden-headed, whatever. Decisions of bullying Kashmiri Pandit employees in, on the streets of Kashmir and Jammu. We don't, it can't be countenanced in democracy. You have to take a call. It is your call of constitutional duty, your moral duty as a representative of the Indian nation state to take a call and straighten the issues of PM package employees there and settle them with dignity, honor, and with all their emoluments back. I don't buy an argument that they are changing their goalposts every day of their demands. Their demand is genuine and there is a consensus within the political spectrum of Jammu and Kashmir that whatever their demands, they are just, they are genuine and justice warrants that they should be resolved as urgently, as quickly as possible. That is the message we are sending from here to LG and to his master, Home Minister in Delhi also. That's number two. Number three. Very painfully, I wish to say, for rehabilitating and return of this community, which is aborigin, as I said. And you are afraid of those settlers, those urchins, those lumpans, and you want to cater them because they hold 50 constituencies in the valley, and we don't hold a constituency which systematically were, uh, you know, taken away from us. We held certain constituencies right from 47. We want those constituencies back, delimitation or no delimitation. We want those constituencies by nomination if you have the will to settle Kashmiri Pandits back in home. And mind you, without Kashmiri Pandits physically present in their homeland, Kashmir, the valley, all your efforts at the national, international level of promoting idea of India in Kashmir is an illusion. It will be defeated at all times. And it's a mirage. Nothing will consolidate without my physical presence in Kashmir. Because which was Patabod, Myon Patabajar should reiterate Karun, reform Karun. Number four. I am not an adversarial person politically to what is happening in this country under the leadership of Modi. At the macro level, Nation is going in the right direction under his leadership. As long as going is good. But at the micro level of Kashmir and Kashmiri Pandits, what is there for us? 
Prime Minister, we respect you that you held the hand of Kashmiri Pandits under the leadership of my brother here. But that was done in US. We admire that, we welcome that, we respect that. But back home, you are not willing to talk to us over a cup of tea. What is the matter? And this question I pose both to Utpal and to Ajay also. What is the matter after all? Are we apartheid to Modi? What is his problem? If he recognizes Kashmiri pundits abroad and sends a signal world over that uh, 370 is okay. But back home, what is he doing to us? I remember it needs more than 56 inch chati. It needs large heartedness. And it was Inder Gujral, former Prime Minister Anandji, who said that for this illustrious Kashmiri Pandit community, which has contributed a great deal in the shaping of nation building and democratic, progressive and secular India, if the coffers of the country are to be emptied for them, it would still be a small price to pay. I want Modi to follow this and show double the 56 inch chati in accommodating 7 lakh people back in the home. After all, we have a legal right, we have a constitutional right. Maybe we will be forced to say that you are failing in your constitutional duty, not addressing the issue of Kashmiri Pandits. You said in the parliament, your home minister said in the parliament, and outside parliament when you made 370 inoperable, you said those who have, for the reasons of militancy, being displaced from Kashmiri Pandits will see to it that they are back in their home. So much time has lapsed. Even you are not granting, your ministers are not granting an audience what to speak of sending us back home. At least in democracy, there is a jurisprudence of engagement. We may not be electorally relevant but we have a factorial relevance in the context of Kashmir. That factorial relevance we re-emphasize and re here. As I said, at macro level, we are with Modi. But at micro level, if he continues to go by the advice of this bureaucracy and some of his colleagues on this issue. And mind you, Modi is conscious of our problems. There is a parliamentary standing committee report, which was headed by late Sushma Swaraj. We had put in our best. She has created a document. It's on the shelves of parliament. Please ask Home Minister to look into it. Create a committee of Kashmiri Pandits. It's not a big deal to meet 20 Kashmiri Pandits of various uh, shades. If you ask Surinder Kaur to do it, he can collect. If he could collect full haul of this, and he, if he could collect in Houston, full Kashmiri Pandas. Each one of us can contribute. Mr. Moti Kohl is here, he can do it. Ajay Bharti can do it, Utpal can do it. 
All others can do it. We can collectively do it. We can select the best of our cream and put across our point of view in a half an hour meeting with Modi. But provided he has time. He has time for all others, but not for Kashmiri Pandits. So therefore, one more emphatic point is that Prime Minister Modi himself, because I will tell you, we are used to the meetings with Prime Ministers. Maybe our ego level is so big that we don't talk about Prime Minister from the bottom. We have talked about Pandit Nehru, Indra Ji, Narasimha Rao, Atal Vyari Vajpai. And Modi Ji has come to us ourselves. और हमारे जो ट्रेडिशनल वस्तु हैं वो पहन के साफ़ा पहन के हमारे साथ फोटो उठाए। He knows it. He knows the problem of Kashmir. He was involved in Kashmir affairs as a pracharak, as an RSS person. But what is this? Please, we very humbly beseech the Prime Minister, without any Conflict. We have no conflict. You are our leader. You are our prime minister. We want at micro level an engagement with you so that you appreciate. You called the leaders of mainstream parties and that ended uh, into a damn skip ultimately. But if you call 20 of Kashmiri pundits, I think you will be happy, you will be wiser, you will be very happy. So this was my third or fourth point. I'll make an last point because I was posed a question. You know, Supreme Court of India, where I feel proud to practice. When I migrated, I chose no other court but the Supreme Court. It had its intellectual flair. The lawyers there were giants. Like all the institutions in today's context are failing and falling. The judiciary has also become insensitive and it has fallen from the grace. No, no, you can't say that. I can't say that at least. Please hold, hold your tongues on that because Supreme Court ultimately is a constitutional court. We went there with a grievance. Our lawyers pleaded very competently. But at one point of time, they slipped when Chief Justice and government pleaded that it should be transferred to Jammu because the major population is in Jammu. Matter was transferred. And in Jammu, we don't have any expeditious sharing. That is one aspect. The other aspect is that it's the lack of teamwork. We wish to score points in filing a PIL. No scoring of points. If ten minds sit together, we can create a petition which will find a space in the registry of the Supreme Court. And we have an advantage of National Human Rights Commission judgment in our favor. Wherein we have a definition of our atrocities as akin to genocide. 
So we can do that. I undertake to do that under my supervision. Some of my team, I include Mr. Upadhyay also. But I cannot do it. I have some professional constraint as a senior counsel. Because I am a designated senior counsel, we have some professional constraint. By a sure that we'll certainly do it. And we'll try to find some space in the jurisdiction of uh, Supreme Court to take cognizance of whatever we want them to take cognizance for. Lastly, I would again say that Kashmir and Kashmiri militancy is waning. Kashmiri psyche, societal psyche is undergoing a vanquish syndrome. And that vanquish strong is uh, again finds its roots in collapse of Pakistan also. So therefore, what I admire of Prime Minister is that he has opened Kashmir for the rest of the country. There must have been some thought process gone into opening of Kashmir. And he has done it, he has accomplished it. Now it is for us to look for the opportunities in the opening up. I, I should not sound as very great optimistic, but there is a scope. We have to shun our pessimism and reaction politics. We have to be proactive. Proactive in the sense if Kashmir is open for the rest of the world, how do we look into a big opening for ourselves also? I leave that question to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Namaskar. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vaughan. Uh, for uh, shedding light on uh, how things are going on in the um, legal environment. And uh, we'd like to move to another uh, topic now. Um, and that is um, of the bill that was introduced by uh, Mr. Vivek Tankha from the Congress party in the Rajya Sabha last year titled Kashmiri Pandit Recourse, Restitution, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act of 2022. Um, and I'll pose this you know, question to um, you know, the entire um, respectable panelists, whoever would like to address this. Um, the bill has, among other things, um, three or four um, important requirements. There is a uh, request for a one-place settlement in Kashmir. The second is for the place to be given um, protection. The third is to give the license of the Kashmiri Hindus moving back into this um, one place settlement, a license to carry a firearm so that they can pre pre uh, uh, defend themselves. And fourth is all sorts of economic incentives, etc., etc. Now, there are, there are many other aspects, but we won't go into those aspects. What we'd like to find out from the esteemed panelists is uh, what is the likelihood of this um, bill to be passed? Uh, because we hear that it's going to be presented in the uh, Rajya Sabha again uh, very soon in the next coming weeks. Um, 
what do the panelists feel is going to be the um, uh, success uh, factor of this uh, of this bill? So, whoever would like to address this, sure. Um, we have two mics, so whichever mic you'd like. To use. However you feel comfortable I am an incorrigible optimistic on this. As Surinder Cole was optimistic about genocide movie, I am also optimistic about it. But Surinder and all of us know that it took them a lot of effort. This bill of resettlement is like making another Kashmir files. It has initiated, it is pending on the table of parliament. As and when the debate ensues, we have an advantage this time. If we garner support to rope in, the BJP public opinion on this, that would be a bonus. But Vivek Tankha and I, we are in contact on this issue. I have been requesting him that at least from his party, he must initiate a very aggressive debate on this. And initiating an aggressive debate on the resettlement bill will in itself lay a road map and success depends ultimately on the final vote in the parliament and I, I'll assure you that it will not die halfway. It will be discussed and we must effort and garner support of our BJP friends to help us in creating a debate and discussion on this issue. That is what I can say at the moment. Thank you very much, Mr. Ban. Uh, Ashwiniji, I'd like to come to you. Uh, or if you'd like to come here, all, all, uh, all fine. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this uh, subject and uh, whatever else you'd like to share with us. सुना आप लोग कड़वा मीठा झूठ सुनना चाहते हैं या कड़वा सच क्या जोर से बोलिए आप लोग समस्या पर चर्चा करना चाहते हैं या समाधान सुनना चाहते हैं समस्या पता है आ, आपको सरदर्द हो और सुबह से लेकर शाम तक आप कहो कि सरदर्द है सरदर्द है सरदर्द है तो सरदर्द बढ़ेगा या घटेगा बीमारी की चर्चा करने से बीमारी ठीक होती है या मूल कारण को आइडेंटिफाई करके उसमें फिर दवा लेने से क्या जोर से बोलिए कितनी देर मुझे बोलना है नहीं मेरी सात बजे की फ्लाइट है मैं छह बजे तक बोल सकता हूं देखिए आप याद रखिए हॉस्पिटल बहुत अच्छा हो डॉक्टर भी बहुत अच्छा हो लेकिन दवा घटिया हो तो आपकी बीमारी ठीक होगी क्या 
हॉस्पिटल सेवन स्टार हो डॉक्टर सुपर स्टार हो लेकिन आपकी दवा नकली हो तो बीमारी ठीक होगी याद रखिए बीमारी हॉस्पिटल ठीक नहीं करती बीमारी डॉक्टर भी ठीक नहीं करता अंदर आपके क्या जाता है दवा हम सब बात कर रहे हैं सजा हो जाए फांसी हो जाए क्या हो जाए क्या हो जाए अरे एक व्यक्ति ने बोला पंद्रह मिनट के लिए पुलिस हटा लो हिंदुस्तान से हिंदुओं को खत्म कर दूंगा मैं सात लाख की बात नहीं कर रहा मैं सौ करोड़ की बात कर रहा हूं पंद्रह मिनट के लिए पुलिस हटाओ हिंदुस्तान से हिंदुओं को खत्म कर दूंगा वो वीडियो आज भी यूट्यूब पे है उसके खिलाफ लोग गवाही देने के लिए तैयार भी है सारा एविडेंस भी है बरी हो गया कि नहीं जरा बताइए बरी हुआ कि नहीं पता नहीं किस गलत फहमी में है कि आपके हत्यारों को फांसी हो जाएगी और सजा हो जाएगी किस गलत फहमी में है आपको कड़वी बात सुनना है कि नहीं मैं मीठा झूठ नहीं बोलता कड़वी बात बोलूंगा अगली बार मत बुलाना केवल और केवल समाधान बोलूंगा भारत में लोकतंत्र है कि भीड़ तंत्र है सठे साठ्यम समाचरित ये कहां का सिद्धांत है भारत का जिन देशों ने सठे साठ्यम समाचरित सिद्धांत को अपनाया उसके हिसाब से नियम कानून बनाया वहां शांति है समृद्धि है खुशहाली है जिहाद भी कम है आतंकवाद भी कम है माओवाद भी कम कम है नक्सलवाद भी कम है कट्टरवाद भी कम है जातिवाद भी कम आपने कभी सोचा ये नेता माओवादियों का समर्थन क्यों करते हैं नक्सलियों का कम समर्थन क्यों करते हैं आपके संबंध में कहूं तो आतंकवादियों का समर्थन क्यों करते हैं जिहादियों का समर्थन क्यों करते हैं किस लिए करते हो ओट के लिए ओट क्यों चाहिए सत्ता के लिए सत्ता से क्या करना है माल कमाना है यही तो करना है अगर ऐसी व्यवस्था हो जाए कि आप मंत्री हो के माल कमा ही नहीं सकते इसको कहते हैं रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग बेसिकली मैं इंजीनियर था वकालत तो मैं एक्सीडेंटल वकील तो एक्सीडेंटल हूं इसको कहते हैं रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग मैं मारुति में था बगल में गुड़गांव में जब वो गवर्नमेंट की कंपनी थी मारुति उद्योग लिमिटेड और केवल पैसा कमाने नहीं आया था सब कुछ छोड़ छाड़ के केवल देश की सेवा करने में सुप्रीम कोर्ट आया रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग का मतलब यह होता है आप या तो फॉरवर्ड मूव करो या रिवर्स मूव करो अगर ऐसी व्यवस्था हम कर दें कि मंत्री हो के भी विधायक हो के भी फार्म हाउस खरीद ही नहीं पाएगा लंदन में घर बना ही नहीं पाएगा ऑस्ट्रेलिया में बंगलो बना ही नहीं पाएगा तो जाति का जगह बोएगा क्या वो जिहादियों का समर्थन करेगा क्या अलगाववाद फैलाएगा क्या हम लोग पता नहीं समाधान भी क्यों नहीं जा रहे समाधान रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग में है फॉरवर्ड फॉरवर्ड मूव में नहीं है रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग में है सुप्रीम कोर्ट को हमारे सीनियर बैठे हुए खान साहब सुप्रीम कोर्ट को कहते हैं कस्टोडियन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सुप्रीम कोर्ट को कहते हैं प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट गूगल करेंगे तो आपको दस जजमेंट मिल जाएंगे मैं गलत कह रहा हूं क्या कस्टोडियन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन है आप लोगों ने सुना होगा प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट है आपने भी सुना होगा राइट टू लाइफ और लिबर्टी सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट फंडामेंटल राइट है यह भी आपने सुना होगा राइट टू डिग्निटी फंडामेंटल राइट है यह भी सुना होगा राइट टू कल्चर फंडामेंटल राइट है यह भी सुना होगा राइट टू ट्रेडिशन फंडामेंटल राइट है यह भी सुना होगा आपकी राइट टू लाइफ राइट टू लिबर्टी राइट टू डिग्निटी राइट टू कल्चर राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी सब कुछ चली गई इसके लिए क्या सुप्रीम कोर्ट में पीआईएल फाइल करने की जरूरत है क्या जरा बताइए आप पीआईएल की जरूरत है क्या पब्लिक सर्वेंट का मतलब क्या होता है पब्लिक का सर्वेंट आप लोग क्या है पब्लिक 
एम एल क्या है पब्लिक और जजेस क्या है पब्लिक तो आपने परिवार में पांच आदमी है उसमें एक आदमी परिवार का सर्वेंट है क्या उसकी ड्यूटी एक सब लोग आके बताए कि सब्जी खत्म हो गई तो ये हो गया तो गाड़ी पंचर हो गई तो फला हो गया तो फला हो गया फला हो गया अरे वो परिवार का मुखिया है उसकी ड्यूटी है देखना कि किस बच्चे की पेट्रोल खत्म हो गई है किस बच्चे की फीस नहीं गई है किस बच्चे को चोट लग गई है किस कौन सा बच्चे किस बच्चे को कुपोषण है कौन सा बच्चा परेशान है यही तो ड्यूटी है आप लोगों के केस में विधायिका कार्यपालिका न्यायपालिका तीनों ने ही अपनी ड्यूटी नहीं निभाई एकदम फेल हो गए सुप्रीम कोर्ट भी फेल हो गया हाई कोर्ट भी फेल हो गया संसद भी फेल हो गई और सरकार भी फेल हो गई राज्य सरकार भी फेल हो गई केंद्र सरकार भी फेल हो गई और वो ड्यूटी उनको उसी ड्यूटी करने के लिए उनको वेतन मिलता है वही ड्यूटी करने के लिए उनको भत्ता मिलता है आपकी सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी के लिए उनको वेतन मिलता है भत्ता मिलता है गाड़ी मिलती है बंगला मिलता है चार्टेड प्लेन से घूमते हैं नौकर मिलता है आप पब्लिक हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज पब्लिक सर्वेंट है आप पब्लिक हैं प्रधानमंत्री पब्लिक सर्वेंट है आप पब्लिक हैं मुख्यमंत्री पब्लिक सर्वेंट है आपने कुछ नहीं गलत किया है गलत उन्होंने किया है उन्होंने अपनी ड्यूटी ठीक से नहीं निभाई है एक बात समझिए ये जो प्रॉब्लम आप फेस कर रहे हैं ये उन्नीस सौ इक्यानवे की प्रॉब्लम नहीं है कल्चरल वॉर जब से पृथ्वी बनी है तब से हो रहा है विष्णु पुराण उठा के पढ़िए नहीं पढ़ सकते हैं तो बी आर चोपड़ा साहब ने महाभारत बनाने के बाद एक धारावाहिक बनाया था विष्णु पुराण चालीस या पैंतालीस एपिसोड का है आप लोगों के केस में बताने में क्यों इमोशनल हो गया एक बार आप लोग विष्णु पुराण को उठा के देखिए धारावाहिक देखिए नहीं पढ़ सकते देखिए भाई देव दानव संग्राम तो आदिकाल से चल रहा है ना मानव राक्षस संग्राम आदिकाल से चल रहा है उसका रूप बदल गया उसका रूप बदल गया अब आप उसको रिलीजियस वॉर कह सकते हैं यह आतंकवाद आज की समस्या नहीं है आदिकाल से है और आदिकाल से वही होता रहा जो हम कर रहे हैं राक्षस दौड़ाते थे इंद्र भगवान बचाओ प्रभु बचाओ प्रभु बचाओ प्रभु याद होगा सीरियल देखिए आप कभी राक्षसों ने विष्णु की शंकर की पूजा किया कि हमें देवताओं से बचाओ बोलिए जरा कौन कहता था त्राही माम त्राही माम त्राही माम देवता हमेशा देवता ही कहे बचाओ 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 इससे बचाओ उससे बचाओ उससे बचाओ कभी राक्षसों ने ये नहीं कहा भगवान शंकर से या भगवान विष्णु से कि हमको इनको देवताओं से बचाओ ये फैक्ट है आप अपनी समस्या को जब तक केवल कश्मीरी हिंदुओं की समस्या मान के चलेंगे आपको समाधान नहीं मिलेगा नहीं मिलेगा जब तक इस समस्या के रूट काज पे नहीं जाएंगे रूट काज से आपको परमानेंट सोल्यूशन मिलेगा सोल्यूशन आपको नहीं करना है सोल्यूशन तो संसद और सुप्रीम कोर्ट को करना है आपको सोल्यूशन नहीं करना है हां समाधान संसद और सुप्रीम कोर्ट में है लेकिन उनको जगाने का दो तरीका है सड़क सोशल मीडिया तो हाल में हम लोग बैठे हैं ये हो ही रहा है सोशल मीडिया में फर्ट कर रहे हैं वो हो ही रहा है 
लेकिन अब जंतर मंतर और रामलीला मैदान बचा होगा क्योंकि यह लोकतंत्र नहीं है मानिए यह भीड़ तंत्र है और मैं आपको कह रहा हूं एक वकील के नाते मुकदमा चल भी जाएगा सजा नहीं होगी तब तक नहीं होगी जब तक आप लोगों के केस में स्पेशली सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑर्डर करके या संसद में ऑर्डिनेंस लाके सीआरपीसी के बहुत सारे प्रोविजन को बाईपास करने के लिए नहीं कहा जाएगा अगर सीआरपीसी को फॉलो करके आपका मुकदमा चलेगा आपको कभी सजा नहीं कभी आपको न्याय नहीं मिलेगा इसलिए मैं आज आपके मंच से माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट से भी मांग करता हूं आपके साथ जो हुआ है वो आजादी के बाद रेरेस्ट ऑफ रेयर केस है रेरेस्ट ऑफ रेयर इंसिडेंट है तो ऐसे केस में अब गवाहों को ढूंढना गवाहों के बयान के आधार पे सजा होना नामुमकिन है एक ही तरीका है स्पेशली या तो संसद से नार्को पॉलीग्राफ ब्रेन मैपिंग कानून बने और सीआरपीसी के प्रोविजन को बाईपास करने के लिए एक बाकायदा उसमें प्रोविजन हो कि भाई आपके 1991 के जब नरसंहार हुआ है इसमें सीआरपीसी नहीं चलेगी जितने लोग एक्यूज हैं जिनके जिनके खिलाफ एफ है इनका नार्को पॉलीग्राफ ब्रेन मैपिंग का टेस्ट होगा और ये अगर एडमिट कर लिए इनको सजा होगी बदैट सिट अगर आप सोचते हैं कि नहीं 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 नॉर्मल कानून के आधार पे यहां का कानून महाघटिया है जब ये खुले आम एक व्यक्ति कहता है पंद्रह मिनट के लिए हिंदुस्तान से हिंदू खत्म कर दूंगा आज उस विधानसभा में बैठा हुआ है तो आपको यहां का कानून ये जो चल रहा है एग्जिस्टिंग कानून क्योंकि आपके पास न सरकमस्टेंशियल एविडेंस है न ओरल एविडेंस है न मेटेरियल एविडेंस है कुछ भी नहीं है केवल आपकी कही हुई बातें हैं तो दो ही तरीका है अगर मैं कह रहा हूं कि मेरे पिताजी को बिट्टा कराटे ने मारा तो मेरा नार्को पॉलीग्राफ ब्रेन मैपिंग कर लो और मैं कह रहा हूं चूंकि बिट्टा कराटे ने मारा बिट्टा कराटे का नार्को पॉलीग्राफ ब्रेन मैपिंग कर लो अगर हम दोनों की बातें बिल्कुल ठीक है मैं कह रहा हूं मेरे पिता को मारा वो भी कह रहा है हाँ इनके पिता को मारा उसको सजा दे दो बात खत्म अरे उसका किस बात का ह्यूमन राइट भाई जानवरों का कहीं ह्यूमन राइट होता है क्या ह्यूमन का ह्यूमन राइट होता है जानवरों का नहीं स्पेशली स्पेशली मैं संसद में होता तो आपका विषय संसद में उठाता मैं संसद में नहीं मैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट में हूं न्यायपालिका में एक बेंच होती है एक बार होती है हम भान साहब बार के मेंबर हैं बेंच को मतलब जजेस हाई कोर्ट का ध्येय वाक्य है सत्य में वो जयते समझिए जरा गूगल आप करेंगे भारत के जितने हाई कोर्ट हैं उनकी जजेस की कुर्सियों पे लिखा रहता है सत्य में वो जयते सुप्रीम कोर्ट का ध्येय वाक्य है यतो धर्मस्त तो जय है इसका मतलब सत्य में जयते से भी ऊपर है यतो धर्मस्त तो जय हमारे माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जितने जजेस हैं उनकी कुर्सियों पे बकायदा लिखा हुआ है यतो धर्मस्त तो जय है जिससे हमेशा उनको याद रहे जब वो चेयर पे बैठे उनको याद आ जाए हमको धर्म की जय करना और धर्म की जय करने का मतलब होता है अधर्म का जब तक अधर्म का नाश नहीं होगा धर्म की जय नहीं हो सकती है आप इसको मानते हैं कि नहीं तो माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट की दो ड्यूटी हो गई है धर्म की जय हो अधर्म का ऐसी परिस्थितियों में संविधान ने एक प्रावधान है उसको कहते हैं आर्टिकल 142 वो हमारे माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट को शक्ति देता है कि धर्म की जय करने के लिए अधर्म का नाश करने के लिए आपको असीमित शक्ति है लिखा नहीं है क्या क्या शक्ति है इनहरेंट पावर है प्लेनरी पावर है आप जो करना है करिए 
जो ऑर्डर पास करना है पास करिए लेकिन धर्म की जय होनी चाहिए और अधर्म का नाश आपके पक्ष में धर्म है और उन हत्या वो हत्यारे अधर्म पे हैं आपकी जय हो आपको न्याय मिले हत्यारों को फांसी हो यह ड्यूटी हमारे माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट की थी और बहुत कम लोग इस पर चिंतन करते हैं संविधान में शेड्यूल थ्री है उसमें सबकी शपथ है भारत सर जानते हैं हमारे मंत्रियों की जो शपथ है उससे भी बड़ी शपथ है हमारे सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजों की डॉक्टर रंगनाथन से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कभी आप सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजेस की क्योंकि आप बहुत अच्छा अंग्रेजी बोलते हैं हमें तो अंग्रेजी थोड़ा हम कमजोर है आप एक बार मंथ कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर की ओथ और सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजेस की ओथ को कंपेयर कर लिया और हाई कोर्ट के जजेस की ओथ और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के मिनिस्टर की ओथ को कंपेयर कर लिया वो फॉर्म है हम क्या क्या ओथ है सांसद और विधायक मंत्री तीन कैटेगरी है ओथ की फिर चौथी कैटेगरी हाई कोर्ट के जज फिर पांचवी कैटेगरी सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज अगर आप ओथ में देखें क्योंकि मैं ओथ की बात इसलिए कह रहा हूं कभी ओथ पे चर्चा ही नहीं होती खासतौर पे कोर्ट में भी उस ओथ पे कभी चर्चा नहीं होती है बस हमारे माननीय जज एक बार ओथ लेते हैं उसके बाद मुझे लगता है उस ओथ पर दोबारा चर्चा ही नहीं होती सांसद और विधायक मंत्री ओथ लेते हैं हम संविधान के अनुसार कार्य करेंगे जरा अंतर समझना बहुत बारीक अंतर है हम संविधान के अनुसार जज ओथ लेते हैं आई विल अपहोल्ड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आई विल अपहोल्ड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आई विल एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू लॉ सांसद विधायक है और जज कहते हैं आई विल अपहोल्ड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बड़ी शपथ किसकी है जजों की सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजों की है आई विल अपहोल्ड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मैं इस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इसीलिए सांसद विधायक मंत्री को प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट नहीं कहते हाई कोर्ट जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज को प्रोटेक्ट ऑफ प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट कहते हैं हाई सांसद विधायक मंत्रियों को कस्टोडियन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नहीं कहते सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज को कस्टोडियन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कहते हैं दिस इज द डिफरेंस आपके केस में तीनों ही फेल हो गए तीनों ने अपनी ड्यूटी ईमानदारी से नहीं निभाई मैं कह रहा हूं एसआईटी बननी चाहिए थी आपको न्याय मिलता कि नहीं मिलता बाद की बात है न्याय मिलना मिलते हुए दिखना तो चाहिए था दो चीजें होती है जस्टिस मिलना भी चाहिए जस्टिस मिलते हुए दिखना भी चाहिए जस्टिस मिलते हुए दिखे इसमें भी फेल हो गए जस्टिस मिलने की बहुत बात की बात है शुरुआत तो हो जाती और रास्ता मैंने बताया आपको एक बात मैं किसान का लड़का हूं पहले सीधे बुआई होती है पहले कुछ और किया जाता है खेत में ना पहले जुताई गुड़ाई निराई फिर पेस्टिसाइड फिर खरपतवार को निकालना उसके बाद होती है बुआई अगर आप जुताई गुड़ाई निराई किए बिना बीज डालेंगे आपका घर का जो बीज था वो भी बर्बाद हो जाएगा कश्मीर में जुताई गुड़ाई निराई करने की जरूरत है सीधे सीधे आपको लौटा दिया जाएगा मैं कह रहा हूं छह महीने बाद बोलोगे नहीं नहीं गड़बड़ हो गया कुछ पहले जुताई गुड़ाई निराई पहले आप ये जो कश्मीर में वैसे तो पूरे देश के नेता ही करोड़ों के मालिक हैं कश्मीर में खास तौर पे ऐसा कोई नहीं ऐसा भी नहीं कहते कि आपका दो चार एक्सेप्शन भी हो बहुत मोटा माल इन्होंने कमा रखा है बड़े बड़े फार्म हाउस इन्होंने ऑस्ट्रेलिया में बनाए हैं मैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया की बात किस लिए कर रहा हूं तो मैं जानता हूं मुझे किसी ने वीडियो शूट करके लाइव भेजा बोले देखो ये इसका फॉर्म हाउस ये इसका फॉर्म हाउस है इन्होंने लंदन में बड़े बड़े फॉर्म हाउस बना रखे हैं 
दुनिया के एक एक मंत्री एक एक मुख्यमंत्री ने पांच पांच छह छह देशों में बड़े बड़े फार्म हाउस बना रखे हैं तो इसलिए पहले इनकी जुताई गुड़ाई निराई उसके बाद पेस्टिसाइड इनका पहले इनको तिहार में ठोकना पड़ेगा इनको जेल में डालना पड़ेगा नहीं तो फिर ये भावनाओं को भड़काएंगे अपनी पॉलिटिकल माइलेज के लिए एक बार जुताई गुड़ाई निराई हो गई फिर वहां पे और उसके बाद भी तुरंत आपको नहीं भेजना चाहिए मैं तो कह रहा हूं हमारे पास जाट रेजिमेंट है राजपुताना रेजिमेंट है मराठा रेजिमेंट है सबसे बढ़िया तो बिहार रेजिमेंट है वो लाठी मारते हैं बाकी कुछ नहीं करते क्यों लाठी से पिटाई करते हैं सबसे पहले ये हमारे जो रिटायर्ड फौजी हैं सिख रेजिमेंट जाट रेजिमेंट महा रेजिमेंट इनको वहां बसाइए वहां जमीनें खाली पड़ी हुई हैं हमारे भूतपूर्व सैनिकों को जरूरत भी है वो रिटायरमेंट के बाद रहना चाहते हैं सबसे पहले रिटायर्ड फौजियों को आसम राइफल भी ले लीजिए बिहार रेजिमेंट ले लीजिए मराठा रेजिमेंट भी ले लीजिए जो चाहे जो हमारे भूतपूर्व सैनिक जाना चाहे कश्मीर पहले उनको पहुंचाइए उसके बाद आप लोगों को मैं क्यों क्योंकि मैं मैं कश्मीरी हिंदुओं को जानता हूं आप लोग गुलाब के फूल की तरीके हैं आप लोग बहुत इसलिए मैं मैं तो बिल्कुल नहीं कहूंगा सीधे सीधे आपको बसा दिया जाए मैं तो कह रहा हूं पहले भूतपूर्व फौजियों को बसाइए और एक बात जरूर कहना चाहूंगा आप कल ये सोचना समस्या के मूल कारण एक मां के दो बच्चे हो जुड़वा एक साल के बाद या तीन साल के बाद तीन साल बच्चा मां के पास रहना चाहिए तीन साल के बाद एक बच्चे को गुरुकुल में डाल दीजिए दस साल के लिए एक ही मां का एक ही पिता जुड़वा बच्चे नौ महीने पेट में साथ थे और दूसरे को और दूसरे को दस साल के लिए मदरसे में डाल दीजिए एक बच्चे जुड़वा बच्चे एक को दस साल के लिए मदरसे में डालिए दूसरे को दस साल के लिए गुरुकुल में डालिए दस साल के बाद निकलेंगे दोनों में भाईचारा रहेगा क्या जोर से बोलिए दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा झूठ यही है कि सभी रिलीजन समान है और सभी किताबें प्यार मोहब्बत लव अफेक्शन सिखाती है मैं तो कह रहा हूं एक ही मां बाप जुड़वा बच्चे नौ महीने साथ में थे जिसको अगर गलत, गलत फहमी है ट्रायल करके देख लो अगर अभी भी भरोसा नहीं हो रहा दुनिया से भरोसा नहीं हो रहा है अरे आपके जैसे ही पारसी थे आप लोगों के जैसे बड़े शांति से रहते थे बड़े सफाई से रहते थे बड़े समृद्ध थे बड़े खुशहाल थे मात्र सौ साल में पर्शिया ईरान बन गया मात्र सौ साल लगा था पर्शिया को ईरान बनने में सौ साल में गंधार कंधार बन गया दुर्योधन का ननिहाल सौ साल में भारत का ननिहाल कह के पाकिस्तान बन गया सौ साल में तकसिला रावल पिंडी बन गया सौ साल में कह के पेशावर बन गया और आपको तो अपनी पता है कि उन्नीस से आके उन्नीस सौ इक्यानवे आते आते आपके साथ क्या हो गया हम रूट काज पे क्यों नहीं जा रहे सभी रिलीजन भाईचारा नहीं सिखाते सभी रिलीजन वसुधेव कुटुंबकम नहीं सिखाते सभी रिलीजन नारी तू नारायणी नहीं सिखाते सभी रिलीजन सर्वधर्म संभाव नहीं सिखाते जब तक ये झूठ बोला जाएगा ये जो मीठा झूठ बोला जा रहा है तब तक हम समस्या की जड़ में नहीं जा पाएंगे इसलिए मैं कह रहा हूं कड़वी सच्चाई मैंने एक पीआईएम फाइल किया है इस देश में बारहवीं तक समान शिक्षा होनी चाहिए वन नेशन वन सिलेबस वन नेशन वन एजुकेशन बोर्ड और बहुत आसान है करना जब वन नेशन वन टैक्स हो सकता है तो वन नेशन वन सिलेबस भी हो सकता है कश्मीर वाला कश्मीरी में पढ़े गुजरात वाला गुजराती में पढ़े महाराष्ट्र वाला मराठी में पढ़े बंगाल वाला बंगाली में पढ़े जैसे लेकिन केंद्रीय विद्यालय का सिलेबस एक होता है वैसे ही किया जाएगा तभी मैं कह रहा हूं नहीं तो एक बार जाएंगे दस साल के बाद फिर आपको लगेगा पहले आपसे नफरत की जा रही थी उसके बाद आपके बच्चे से नफरत की जाएगी 
दुनिया का कोई एक स्कूल बताइए जहां मदरसा हो और महिला पुरुष को इक्वल राइट हो सोच लेना अभी मत बोलो सोचना गूगल करके दुनिया का कोई एक देश बताइए जहां मदरसा हो बस देव कुटुंबकम की भावना बची हो दुनिया का कोई एक देश बताइए जहां मदरसा हो वहां सर्व धर्म संभाव हो दुनिया का कोई एक देश बताइए जहां मदरसा हो वहां नारी तू नारायणी यानी महिला पुरुष को समान अधिकार हो नहीं हो सकता भैया नहीं हो सकता इसलिए मैं कह रहा हूं संविधान का प्रियंबल कहता है देश की एकता अखंडता मजबूत हो आपसी भाईचारा हो धर्म की जय हो अधर्म का नाश हो प्राणियों में सद्भावना हो तो सबसे पहले आपको इस देश में एक देश एक शिक्षा लागू करना पड़ेगा यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड तो बाद की बात है सबसे पहले यूनिफॉर्म एजुकेशन लागू लाना पड़ेगा तब जाके हिंदू मुस्लिम पारसी ईसाई सबके बच्चे आपस में प्यार से रहेंगे नहीं तो समस्या एक बार आप बस भी जाओगे मैं आपको कह रहा हूं मदरसे अगर बंद नहीं हुए पच्चीस साल के बाद आपका बच्चा वहां नहीं रुकेगा यह आप लिख लीजिए मैं टेस्ट मैच का खिलाड़ी हूं 2020 स्टाइल में नहीं खेलता हूं वनडे स्टाइल में नहीं खेलता मैं तो जहां जाता हूं डेढ़ दो घंटे बोलता हूं लेकिन समय का अभाव है और मुझे वेब चेक एयरपोर्ट भी पहुंचना है कल मेरा गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी में कार्यक्रम है इसलिए अपनी बात खत्म करता हूं वनडे मातरम भारत माता की जय बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अश्विनी जी जैसा कि आपने बोला हम जगह जगह देख रहे हैं कि जी ट्वेंटी के उपलक्ष्य में देर इज वन स्लोगन वन वर्ल्ड वन वन ह्यूमैनिटी एंड वन समथिंग एल्स हाँ तो उस संदर्भ में Why can't we have one nation, one law, as Ashwini ji said? I think it's time to face inward and not address the world. But anyway, uh, we'll move on. Um, we'll move on to uh, you know our. Uh, I know we are coming up on uh, the end of our, uh, our discussion, so we'll just discuss one more uh, one more topic that you know we had, which is. the upcoming elections as ashwini ji mentioned um you know we have the responsibility of changing our environment and uh, as he said that you know a politician is a, a servant of the people and so are government officials etc etc that we have the power to change things if they are not working right now in the upcoming elections i have to say that kashmiri pandits will be a fulcrum in the 2024 elections if kashmiri pandits are not a factor then we might as well just walk away now it is clear that the ruling party knows we are not a vote bank of course you know that's what we've been hearing from everybody loud and clear that we are not a vote bank but we have political capital and here's why in uh, a meeting that uh, our previous deputy prime minister uh, advani ji had with uh, mr rakesh kohl uh, in new york and by the way you will hear uh, mr rakesh kohl moderating the next session uh, panel discussion right after this one and advani ji said and i quote what happens to kashmiri pandits is the litmus test for the idea of india now back then advani ji knew that this was something that india was moving towards now the kashmir files has raised the awareness of kashmiri pandits nationally and internationally opposition has taken this up um as i mentioned earlier vivek tantha ji from uh, the congress party has presented a bill in the rajya sabha for uh, resettlement of kashmiri pandits etc etc 
Arvind Kejriwal has said, whether it came from his heart or not, what was being done to the PM package employees is unfair and they should be paid their salary for eight months. So, uh, Kashmiri Hindus, you know, are a alive topic and, uh, uh, and different parties are wanting to do something about it. And uh, the position of the Kashmiri Hindus is that, you know, we want the right to justice. And uh, we need the opportunity to live a decent and a peaceful life. But the opportunity is there. You know, there are all these different political parties, you know, whoever wants to uh, put their weight behind it, uh, they will get a lot of attention from the citizens and from the voters. We are very fortunate to have a, a wonderful uh, set of panelists right here uh, who has a tremendous following on social media and otherwise. And we would like to be, you to be, our force multiplier. We are a civil society movement. We are doing what we can. But we don't have the social media following, as Ashwini ji mentioned, that the way the politicians listen to you is when there's something happening on social media and otherwise. So it is our earnest hope and expectation that as and when you have opportunities to, to, sh to share your thoughts that you will be our force multiplier. Um, I'd like to open the floor to uh, anyone you know, who wants to comment on this thing uh, before we uh, move on to uh, wrapping our, uh, our panel. So uh, would anybody like to go? Yeah, sure. Uh, Ashwini ji has to leave, so you know, we'll wrap up the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I'd like to thank all the panelists uh, for uh, sharing their thoughts with us. And uh, as is customary you know, in our panel, before I proceed with the uh, impressions, as, as the take-home messages from today's stimulating interaction. Let us give a thunderous round of applause to all the panelists here. <laughs> this is for Ashwini Ji as well. I'd like to take a few moments of your attention uh, to highlight the takeaways. Oh, would you like to say something, Dr. Anand? Please. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, so just, just a very brief comment, uh, listening to the amazing panelists, uh, uh, Mr. Bhan and Ashwini ji, um, and you know what they said. Um, I have slight disagreements with that, possibly because I'm not from their profession and <laughs> I, can, I can be very uh, free with uh, uh, my views. Uh, three points I'd like to make. Number one, as the Navajo saying goes, you can't pretend to wake a person up, or you can't wake a person up by pretending to be asleep. And when Ashwini ji talked of uh, the Supreme Court uh, saying, or the logo, you know, Yatha Dharmastha Tujaya, uh, the origin of that is really fascinating. I mean, this is the country uh, where the origin of this, this phrase, this iconic phrase that is uh, the logo of Supreme Court is on the eve of the greatest battle the world had ever seen, uh, Duryodhana asked Gandhari, said, Oh, mother, uh, you are our blood. Side with us, stand with us. And Gandhari said, Yato jaya. If you are righteous, you will win. It is not a matter of blood. You know? It's an amazing... And when I see um, the, the pleadings of Kashmiri Hindus, I mean, I am not a Kashmiri Hindu. I... But yet, uh, this cause is so dear to me. And one may wonder why. And the reason for that is exactly this, that I believe in that logo of Supreme Court. This is not a Kashmiri Hindu cause. This is a civilizational cause. 
When you are destroyed, I am destroyed. Where is my two ways about it? This is not your fight. This is our fight. And I just, I just lament that people uh, look at the praises that they get. They analyze the praises that they get, but they don't analyze the insults. I think one, it's, it's very important to analyze the insults. And to me, insults are of two kinds. One is that you're humiliated, and the other is that you're embarrassed. And this cause, the Kashmiri Hindu cause, has exhibited both these kinds of insults. With due respect to uh, uh, Bhanji, I'd like to say that we as a country have been utterly humiliated. How can, as I said, how can we go about our daily business for 33 years without realizing that Hindus are refugees in their own land? This is utter humiliation. This is the kind of humiliation that invaders subjected on us. This is again not a Hindu issue, this is an Indian Bharat issue. From Somnath to Kashi Vishwanath, from Babarpur to Bhaktiyarpur. This is how the entire population has been subjugated through humiliation. We are not even realizing that there are refugees that have been driven out for 30 years. What PIL? What kind of application do we put? The second is embarrassment. And that, that I don't know which one is worse, humiliation or embarrassment. When Bhanji said that we can have a bolus and we can restructure the PIL and we can approach the Supreme Court, first of all, with due respect, again, I keep on saying that there already is a contempt of court charge against me, but let it, <laughs> let it be. Uh, when, some, when Bhanji said, about the institutions not being the same and someone shouted shame and Panji immediately said no, hold your tongue. I am sorry, utter shame. <laughs> not just shame, criminality. <laughs> Supreme Court committed a criminality. If I was the judge, CGI would have put those judges behind bars. <laughs> it is embarrassing to file a PIL to go to the Supreme Court. Are you humans or are you animals? In what way are you better than Bitta Karate and Yasin Malik? For you to say enough time has elapsed? Why should I hold my tongue? And what will be left of me if I hold my tongue? How will I look at people, my own people, with my eyes? This is, the, we don't realize. The tragedy is three. One, it is not a Kashmiri Hindu cause. It is my cause. Number two, it is humiliation. And number three, it is embarrassment. And we keep on looking for roadmap, roadmap. Roadmap is for bloody PWD engineers and guys who make roads and maps and flyovers. What roadmap do I require? I can't see the problem. On day one, when my government got elected, I should have made sure within 24 hours or a month, forget about damn roadmap. Every one of the Kashmiri Hindus would be rehabilitated. Sure, sure. Why do I need a roadmap? And why do I need uh, uh, Indian Army regiments to go there? I need to look at those adversaries in the eye and say, this is righteous. This is what Gandhari wanted me to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Dr. Ranganathan. Sir? Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Ranganathan, for uh, that spirited uh, 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 you know, expression Attempt of your thoughts. Four charges against you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, we, we, you were talking about, uh, you know, too much time has elapsed. Uh, the Supreme Court in its own, uh, you know, uh, voice had said, uh, uh, you know, a crime never dies. And yet, you know, we are dying to get justice. So, uh, you know, we, we have this right there. So, uh, um, so kind of, you know, leaving uh, everybody on, uh, on a positive note, you know, we were uh, we've discussed a lot of things today. 
Um, uh, it's obviously clear uh, we have to move forward and uh, every day is a, uh, is a struggle. Every day uh, we have to keep on you know, uh, doing our efforts uh, to get back to our homeland. You know, as somebody said, uh, success is not owned, uh, but it is leased and rent is due every day. So every day we have to keep working towards our goal and, and very soon we will reach you know, where we have to reach which is our own uh, motherland. Uh, so we uh, appreciate the support from all our panelists, uh, the media, and all of you. Uh, may India stand together uh, in this movement of Kashmiri Pandits returning to Kashmir. Thank you all for listening very patiently and thank you all for the wonderful finalists. <laughs> Namaskar and Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Jai Hind. Jai Hind.